Hello and welcome to this session on turbulence modeling. So as far as turbulence is concerned, it's a highly unsteady and irregular non-periodic in space and time kind of a phenomena and it results in enhanced transport of all flow quantities which are fluctuating in time and space. There is no uniformity in turbulence. So what we ultimately encounter is a large variety of sizes of eddies. So you see very large eddies, you see very small eddies, the larger eddies breaking down into smaller eddies and the smaller eddies are breaking down further into smaller eddies and we are going to speak about what is the concept of energy cascading in this regard but basically turbulence results in a loss of pressure energy. It basically results in a loss of uh, the flow energy which is driving the flow it is lost and therefore the question comes that there are situations when we would like turbulence because, because it would enhance our heat transfer coefficient, it would enhance the mixing of the different species but it comes at a cost of the loss of pressure. So we have higher pressure drop and that's why we have a uh, trade-off here that we have to ask ourselves whether turbulence is desired or not, whether it's a boon or a bane, because if turbulence is desired, then we have to pay the cost of the reduced flow pressure. So let's say flow is entering into a pipe, it's piping structure, and we want enhanced turbulence to cause efficient heat transfer. The cost we have to pay is that we have to um, the the duty on the uh, the pump or let's say a compressor which is attached at the beginning of the piping structure is increased because it has to provide higher pressure to cause the same amount of mass to flow within the domain. So the cost is the pressure drop which is increased because of turbulence. So what happens in turbulence is like you can imagine a particle enters into the domain, it doesn't just go straight away out of the domain but it spends a lot of time mixing together, interacting with the walls, spending its time together and it needs energy for this and the energy that it gets, the, the fluid particle gets is from the pressure which is uh, applied at the inlet and the difference in pressure that is a pressure drop which is driving the flow and this pressure drop is eaten up by the fluid particle in spending more time than required inside the domain. So the residence time does increase, it does increase the amount of um, mixing inside the flow domain but the cost we have to pay is the loss in pressure. So just to classify how we approach the turbulent flow in terms of Reynolds number Let's have a look at different kinds of Reynolds numbers. So Reynolds number is defined as the inertial force upon viscous forces and uh, we are very well familiar with the definition in terms of mathematics. So when the Reynolds number is less than 10 for most of the problems, we have a flow regime called the creeping flow regime. Now in the creeping flow regime, this is where most of the uh, bacteria or uh, sperms, uh, they are moving at this regime. The Reynolds number is quite low, that's why they have to struggle very hard to move even a little bit ahead. Uh, but human beings, we don't operate um, in the creeping flow regime. Our uh, characteristic length scale is quite high that we are well, well outside this creeping flow regime because the struggle in the creeping flow regime is that you have to move very much to move in the forward direction. So it's very hard to exist in the creeping flow regime. Um, but if we go ahead from the creeping flow regime, when the Reynolds number slowly starts increasing, we have the laminar flow regime until the onset of the transitional flow, where the flow is partly laminar and partly turbulent. And then the low turbulence regime starts off and then it becomes highly turbulent. That's the turbulent flow regime. So the important thing is to determine these uh, Reynolds transition and Reynolds turbulent in most of the cases. In some cases this 10 is also not a fixed value. We'll see some examples and we'll understand them. So let's have a look at the pictorial representation of a jet which is coming out and as, as it comes out of the orifice you can see some uh, vortex roll up takes, pair, uh, takes, uh, takes place and uh, these vortices also interact with each other and as they proceed further into the stagnant fluid uh, this becomes a fully turbulent flow. Another very important example is flow around a cylinder. It's a two-dimensional view that you can see here and for a lower, lower Reynolds number you can operate in the creeping flow but above this you are slowly entering the laminar flow regime. In the creeping flow regime the flow sticks entirely to the surface of the cylinder so there is no flow separation at all but beyond the creeping flow in the laminar regime already there is a flow separation, there is a separation bubble formed here and this 
separation bubble starts becoming unstable if you increase the Reynolds number beyond a value of something like 30 that uh, the oscillations start occurring so there's a small push because of which this vortices behind start fluctuating all the way to a turbulent flow regime as you can see here it's a very highly uh, non uh, periodic it's a non uh, unsteady and non periodic phenomena in spa space and time so this is another example how turbulence sets in